Men and women are similar and different, obviously, but they're similar and different in all facets of their life. For instance, men and women have different physical excellencies, and one of the main physical excellencies of men is strength, and women is beauty. This is why you have whole beauty industries and beauty pageants. The first great epic, the Iliad, was written because of the beauty of the woman. You don't have these things for men, they just naturally arose for women. Now you might say, wait, there's like Mr. Universe, isn't that like a beauty pageant? Well, no, and for two reasons. First, women aren't really interested in it. They don't see those men as extremely desirable like men do with women in, say, Miss America. And second, I said that one of the excellencies of men is strength, and those competitions are essentially about strength or a strong physique. Now, none of what I've said up until now is terribly insightful. It's been common sense for like the entirety of humanity. But it's important to clearly communicate this because to understand the virtue of modesty, you must first understand the virtue of feminine beauty. The reason why modesty is important is because women are so beautiful. And one of the aspects of modesty is covering. But when we think about covering, we often interpret it negatively, like, hey, why are you covering something up that I wanna see or something that I wanna show? As if the body is akin to like a new toy or an iPhone, like why would you cover it? Why don't you just show it off? But the problem is partly in the language and partly in the image. So let's talk about language first. I had a friend who I used to work with who was an Asian woman, and on the TV in the room where we were was a news program discussing a study of men, and it found that men found Asian women most attractive. She was aghast and said, ugh, that Asian fetish. Now, I was shocked and said, you just discovered that you're part of the most desirable group of women and you're just characterizing it negatively by describing it as a fetish. She took a good thing and made it bad by wrapping it in a negative word, fetish. Similarly, we associate negative things with the word covering. We assume the worst kind of covering, like a toddler hiding a toy from his sister. We assume, incorrectly, that we're covering something up because the thing should not be seen or because it's bad. But the truth is the exact opposite. Women cover because they are so exquisitely beautiful. And we cover things for all sorts of reasons, for protection, for surprise, like presents, or for adornment, like a home. And the covering, the clothing that women wear is not a potato sack, but a beautiful covering, beautiful clothing. And this is because the surface symbolizes the depth. The beautiful clothing symbolizes the beautiful body beneath. You see, from the very beginning to the end of the Bible, the beauty of the woman is displayed. The first words out of the mouth of man is a poem in praise of the beauty of his wife. And the conclusion of the Bible is the unveiling of the beauty of the bride of Christ. But not only is physical beauty one of the virtues of women, that is, not only is she beautiful, but that beauty is intense, beauty of the highest quantity. Beauty that makes men do anything to have it. They fight wars, work for years, compose great works of poetry, prose, and music. And it is for that reason that she covers, that she ought to cultivate modesty. Not because of her plainness, but because of her excessive exquisiteness, her surfeit of loveliness. Her beauty is so prolific and powerful that when it's fully uncovered and consummated, it produces another person. And it's because of this alluring power that it must be covered, held inside until it has a home. And, of course, every virtue of humans is firstly a virtue of God, and thus, God is modest. God's beauty is also so intense that he must hide for fear that we are destroyed by its dazzlingness. This is Moses behind a rock and all men before God in the Bible falling down or turning away, not because of his lack, but because of his beauty. 
And once again, once we are ready for the full unveiling, God's beauty will be unveiled. God also gave nature herself modesty. She hides her secrets, her chemical composition, her mathematical structures. We would not be able to understand all that a leaf or a hand has to offer if her depth were on her surface. Remember what happens when the energy in an atom is released. So don't disparage modesty because it is the clothing of the highest beauty God has made. Thank you so much for checking out the video this week. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Bible is art. Uh, you can go to my website if you'd like to be uh, notified every time a new video uh, comes out. Um, that would be lovely. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. I'd love to hear what you think. I try to respond to every question as long as it's not um, crazy. So thank you so much. I'll see you later.